Hello students, um, today we're going to change gears and start talking about a different type of modeling. So what we've been doing so far this semester has been what's called theoretical modeling, where we talk about what is the theory, what do we believe happens, and then how do we build a model from it. So what we're going to start today is empirical modeling, which is the reverse. So if we've got data, how can we go back to a mathematical equation that fits that data? Okay, and so some of this will be familiar to some of you, but it is a different framework. So we're going to talk about some things, covariance, correlation, um, regression, that you may have, may or may not have seen before, um, but we're going to talk about it from the perspective of modeling. Okay, so in empirical modeling, we generally have um, two data sets. Um, so it might be, for example, time and another variable. Um, or any two data sets. So we're going to have a set of points um, x1, y1, up to xn, yn, where we've got these paired data values. And what we'd like to do is find a model that predicts y based on x. Okay. And so the simplest example uh, is a linear model. Right, where y is equal to some mx plus b, right? And that's what we're going to start with. Uh, but we are going to consider um, more interesting models. So finding a linear model is called linear modeling. It's pretty basic. Um, again, it comes down to talking about covariance and correlation and then regression line. We'll talk about all of that. Um, but what's going to be more interesting and what we're going to focus more of our time on is nonlinear modeling. So fitting a linear equation is great and all, but a lot of cases, like if you think about the things that we've learned this semester already, nonlinear linear models don't necessarily fit them, right? We've had exponential curves and logistic curves and all kinds of things. Um, so when we talk about nonlinear modeling, it splits into three different cases. So the first one is what is called intrinsically linear. Okay, and so this is models of the form y equals a1 times some function of x, uh, f1 of x plus a2 times some function of x to a whatever k times some function of x, okay? So these functions of x may not be linear terms, right? So this would be one example, y equals mx plus b, but you could have something like a polynomial would be intrinsically linear, right? If you had something like 3x plus 4x squared plus 5x to the third, this is an intrinsically linear, right? Because each of these, we've got a constant times some function of x, constant times some function of x, which is x squared in this case, or x cubed. And these are actually relatively easy um, to fit, okay? The next one that we're going to be interested in, and I'm going to erase part of this one so that I can write the next one up, is what are called um, intrinsically nonlinear, but, non but linearizable. Intrinsically nonlinear, but linearizable. Okay, and so these are models that can be transformed into something intrinsically linear. Um, usually, using logarithms are going to be our most most common tool. Um, but with square roots, sometimes you can linearize things. Um, so an example of this would be something like y equals a times e to the R, um, rx. Right? This is a nonlinear function. y equals a times e to the rx um, is a non inherently nonlinear function. Right? This isn't linear in any way. But if we take the logarithm of it. So if you take the logarithm ln of y equals ln of a e 
to the r x, right? Remember your log rules lets you split this up into ln of a plus r x. Okay, so now we've taken something that wasn't linear and turned it into something linear. So you can see here we've got something equal to uh, a constant plus a constant times some function of x. And so that now this has become linearized, okay? And so that's why we call it linearizable. Um, again, some kind of logarithm we'll talk about. There's a few cases mostly we use logs um, when we talk about these. And so those are actually also relatively easily to model. The third category, um, which includes things like logistic functions, are inherently uh, nonlinear and nonlinearizable. Okay, and so like I said, the logistic equation is an example like this. There's no way to take like a logarithm of the logistic equation, y equals a e to the rx over 1 plus e to the rx. That's the equation for logistic growth. You can't make that linear in any way. Um, and so fitting that is more of a challenge. So in the next lecture, we'll talk about covariance and correlation which are ways of determining kind of how linear the relationship between two variables is.